July 14, 1958. On a Monday morning, an explosion and fire ripped through the Williams Hardware Store, a four-story building located on the 100 block of South Vermillion Street, which housed one of the largest hardware stores in Northern Illinois. Lost in the fire were the lives of six people, they being Selma Haltman, age 49, Vernon Rush, age 36, George Blaine, age 53, Ray Ashinger, age 59, and the owner of the hardware store, Don Williams, age 57, and his 16-year-old son, Alan Williams. All were employed by the store with the exception of Rush, who was a customer and had just left the building and had gotten into his car, which was parked in the alley on the north side of the building. The explosion then tore through the building, blowing out a section of the wall on the fourth floor, showering tons of brick and mortar and debris down on Rush's car. The car was crushed with him sitting behind the wheel. On this morning, there was a devastating flood in the city, which is believed to have caused a backup of mine gas into the store, causing the explosion. The gas odor could be smelled when the store was open for business that morning, and it got progressively worse as the morning wore on. No smoking signs were posted in the building, and Don Williams was called to the store. He arrived with his son, Alan, Don Williams and Ashinger were looking for the source of the gas smell and were in the basement at the time when this explosion took place. His son and Mrs. Haltman were standing near the front entrance. Young Williams and Mrs. Haltman died later at St. Mary's Hospital from their injuries. Williams and Ashinger were later found in the basement. The body of George Blaine was removed from the second floor of the building. After four men, Frank Tooley, Assistant Fire Chief Joe Gothier, George Schultz, and Policeman Joe Harkar entered the building after a ladder from one of the fire trucks was thrust through the second story window. The fire was fought for 12 hours by Streeter Fire Department and fire departments from neighboring towns. All this being coordinated by Streeter Assistant Fire Chief Joe Gothier. The explosion was so intense that autos on the street were turned over and windows shattered in the buildings across the street. The store was usually a very busy place, but because of the flood in Streeter, it is believed that most people were home battling floodwaters. If not for this, there would probably have been a lot more lives lost. The fire loss will well exceed $500,000 and will be remembered as one of Streeter's worst. Now let's sit back and look at the scenes from this devastating fire and relive them once again. People by the thousands jammed the streets and so forth to watch this fire. Firemen tried to shadow their windows on the south side of the building with fire hoses so as to get water inside the building. But they being fire windows, were virtually indestructible. Policemen were called in to try to shoot out the glass with shotguns. This was to no avail. Bruce Restaurant on the left of your screen was one of the restaurants in the area that stayed open to supply the firemen with coffee, sandwiches, rolls, whatever their needs might be. She along with other restaurants in the area also supplied coffee to them. Roost Restaurant is now occupied by the Country Cupboard Restaurant. Smoke was intense in the downtown area. Smoke billowed up in the air for thousands of feet. Notice the top of the elevator shaft being blown out. The explosion happened in the basement and followed the elevator shaft up and blew out at the top. In doing so, scattered fire and flames onto every floor as it traveled up the elevator shaft. And it wasn't long before the building was a raging inferno. Firemen fought the blaze from every angle, 
Here they're climbing the fire escape on the side of the Murray building to get to the roof of the building so that they could fight the fire from that angle. The streets were nothing but a mass of hoses. After the fire was brought under control and extinguished, this was a de the site looking down Vermilion Street from Main Street, looking to the south. A once proud building is nothing more than a shell any longer. A hardware store that was noted all over this area, because if you couldn't find it at Williams Hardware, there wasn't hardly any hardware stores around in the northern part of the state that would have what you were looking for. Seemed like they had a little bit of everything. There was a southwest corner of the building that they were afraid might fall. They didn't want to send anybody into the building until this corner was removed. So therefore, therefore Farthing Construction Brothers brought in a crane to remove this corner of the building. streets everywhere from the force of the explosion. Notice the large gapping hole at the top. This was caused by the initial explosion when it fell out and fell onto the cars below. One of the biggest hardware stores in northern Illinois is no longer. Then came the grim task of removing the body from the second floor after the fire ladder was thrust through the second story window. It was at this time that the four men entered the building. They being Joe Gothier, George Schultz, Frank Tooley, and policeman Joe Harkar. And the body of George Blaine is removed from the building with the assistance of a crane and lowered to the waiting stretchers below. On your left you see Chief of Police John Guidas. This would be G Police Sergeant John Thu and George Schultz and Frank Tooley escorting the body to the waiting ambulance. People came from near and far to witness this fire. People lined the streets. The weary firefighters grabbing a fast lunch. And this is all that remains. This would be looking along the north side of the building, down the alley. This is all remains of the once proud building. The buildings across the street felt the force of the impact from the explosion. This would be the buildings directly to the west, across the street from the Williams Hardware. Notice the force of the explosion. Crowds gather. This will always be remembered as one of Streeter's worst.